If you were being interrogated by Taliban as a suspected U.S. spy, it might be hard to imagine a happy ending. But for journalist Yvonne Ridley, the ordeal in Afghanistan led her to convert to a religion she says is the biggest and best family in the world. The formerly hard-drinking Sunday school teacher became a Muslim after reading the Quran on her release. She now describes radical cleric Abu Hamza al-Masri as quite sweet really, and says the Taliban have suffered an unfair press. Working as a reporter for the Sunday Express, in September 2001, Ridley was smuggled from Pakistan, across the Afghan border. But her cover was blown, when she fell off her donkey, in front of a Taliban soldier near Jalalabad, revealing a band camera underneath her robes. Her first thought as the furious young man, came running toward her was, Wow, a you're gorgeous, she says. He had those amazing green eyes, that are peculiar to that region of Afghanistan, and a beard with a life of its own. But fear quickly took over. I did see him again on my way, to Pakistan after my release, and he waved at me from his car. Ridley was interrogated for ten days, without being allowed a phone call, and missed her daughter Daisy's ninth birthday. Of the Taliban, Ridley says, I couldn't support what they did or believed in, but they were demonized beyond recognition, because you can't drop bombs on nice people. It has been suggested. The 46-year-old is a victim of Stockholm Syndrome, in which hostages take the side of the hostage takers. But she says, I was horrible to my captors. I spat at them, and was rude and refused to eat. It wasn't until I was freed, that I became interested in Islam. Indeed, the Taliban deputy foreign minister was called in, when Ridley refused to take her underwear down, from the prison washing line which was in view of soldiers' quarters. He said, A hey look if they see those things, they will have impure thoughts. Afghanistan was about to be bombed, by the richest country in the world, and all they were concerned about was my big, flappy, black knickers. I realized the US doesn't have to bomb the Taliban they just fly in a regiment of women, waving their underwear, and they will all run off. Once she was back in the UK, Ridley turned to the Quran, as part of her attempt to understand her experience. I was absolutely blown away, by what I was reading, not one dot or squiggle had been changed in 1400 years. I have joined, what I consider to be the biggest, and best family in the world. When we stick together, we are absolutely invincible. What do her Church of England parents? in County Durham make of her new family. Initially, the reaction of my family and friends was one of horror, but now they can all see how much happier, healthier, and fulfilled I am. And my mother is delighted, I've stopped drinking, how does Ridley feel, about the place of women in Islam? There are oppressed women in Muslim countries, but I can take you up the side streets, of Tyneside and show you, oppressed women their oppression is cultural, it is not Islamic. The Quran makes it crystal clear, that women are equal, and her new Muslim dress is empowering, she says. How liberating is it to be judged, for your mind, and not the size of your bust or the length of your legs. A single mother, who has been married three times, she says Islam has freed her, from worry over her love life. I no longer sit, and wait by the phone for a man to ring, and I haven't been stood up for months. I have no man stress, for the first time since my teens, I don't have that pressure to have a boyfriend, or husband. But there has been a phone call, from at least one male admirer a North London preacher Abba Hamza al-Masri. He said, A sister Yvonne, welcome to Islam, congratulations. I explained I hadn't yet taken my final vows. And he said, A hey, don't be pressured or pushed, the whole community is there for you, if you need any help, just call one of the sisters. I thought I can't believe it, this is the fire, and brimstone cleric from Finsbury Park Mosque, 
and he is quite sweet really. I was just about to hang up, when he said, A but there is just one thing I want you to remember. Tomorrow, if you have an accident and die, you will go straight to hellfire. I was so scared, that I carried a copy of the vows in my purse, until my final conversion last June. And the hardest part of her new life praying five times a day and i am still struggling to give up cigarette thanks for watching please don't forget to subscribe like comment and share